Hi everyone, um, my name is Francisco and I'm here presenting a paper about a system I developed with Sofia Pinto called Sculpture Inspired Musical Composition, One Possible Approach. Starting off with our objectives, our main goal is to compose music inspired by a sculpture. It's important to note that we do not aim at making sound, but rather focus on the composition side, being our, our output exported as a lead sheet a common format in the jazz world. So dividing our main goal into sub goals. Uh, first, we want both our product and our process to be creative. We want there to be an association between the sculpture and the music, not a direct one. And we want the music to be aesthetically pleasing. Regarding related work, uh, there is a lot of work in the, in the field of generation of musical compositions, both in uh, the computation creativity area. Uh, many musical systems have been developed and in the algorithmic composition, but our main related work is uh, regarding inspirational systems. Um, these two articles, Visual Information Vases by Horn et al. and Cross Domain Analogy from Image to Music by Teixeira and Pinto, uh, were the first ones to, um, to apply uh, the model for inspiration, for cross domain inspiration, as a mapping between two artifacts from different domains trying to capture the answers of the first in the second. And this is the model for inspiration that we used here. So moving to our systems architecture. Moving to our systems architecture, our input is a sculpture or rather 3D model of a sculpture. And we have three outputs, a primal composition, a tonified composition and a genetic composition. And, and our architecture is divided into four modules that will be explained throughout this presentation. First, starting with the, the sculpture representation uh, or input representation, we, we divide it into the shape and the texture. Uh, the shape, we use a polygonal mesh, a triangular mesh. And for the texture, we use a 2D image. And to obtain the texture for a certain um, vertex in the mesh, we simply apply a 3D to 2D um, mapping. Going to our first module, the sculpture module, it receives as input the sculpture and analyzes its features, uh, both in shape and texture. Uh, starting with our shape features, uh, we perform segmentation. We do this uh, by, by feeding the agency matrix of uh, the shape um, to a spectral clustering algorithm, which is a density-based clustering algorithm. The only limitation is that we have to predefine the number of segments. Second feature uh, regarding shape are the angles. Uh, to measure the angles, we use the normal vector of the faces. And to obtain a certain vertex angle, uh, we measure uh, the angles among all its faces, or rather the normal vector of all its faces. And we only consider the maximum one. From there, we can obtain the histogram of angles for, for example, a segment or the whole sculpture. And we also obtain a feature we call zero angle predominance. Um, which main objective is to uh, to tell us if the zero angles uh, zero angled vertex the vertices uh, are inserted into a plane surface or not. This is rather important because if they are, uh, then what our attention goes towards what arises from that planar surface or its limitations, not exactly the plane itself. And finally, the curvature, which is a measure, which is a measure to tell us how concave or convex um, uh, the surface is in a certain vertex. And uh, um, we use this feature by gathering for a certain vertex its mean curvature, its neighbors mean curvature, its neighbors neighbors mean curvature, and order them and perform autocorrelation to get a measure of the variance of curvature. Moving to the texture features, uh, having our segments, we obtain the texture for a certain segment. And from there, we obtain the most common colors. Having the most common colors for all the segments, we uh, obtain a ratio uh, of color variation, which is simply the number of unique colors by the number of total colors. And we also obtain a feature uh, a perceived brightness, which is simply a grayscale conversion uh, based on the brightness of each color. So having our shape and texture features, we move on to the mapping and to the composer module. 
the mapping module simply converts these features into useful information for the composer module. So here we have our uh, sculptures features and the musical elements we consider for the composition process, the melody, harmony and tempo. And our thought process led us to consider that the same way harmony gives context to melody, uh, that is, if we play a certain melody with the major chord on top, it will sound completely different, uh, the same melody with the minor chord. Uh, the texture also gives context to the shape. If we have a certain shape, a cube uh, painted red, it will be completely different than when painted black. So considering this, our first association was from the texture to the harmony and the shape to the melody. This is not a strict association, though. And regarding the composition process itself, we decided to use uh, motifs, which are repetitive fragments of music. So each motif will have a melody and harmony. And we also must consider the motifs order and the number of motifs. Regarding the number of motifs, we decided to get one motif for each segment of the sculpture. So the number of motifs will be the number of uh, segments and the motifs order shall later on be explored. Concerning the melody, the melody is a linear sequence of notes, each note having a pitch and a duration. And the harmony, we, uh, we decided to use a modal approach. So consider the modes of the major scale. So each motif will have, uh, in our case, we decided to use two, uh, two modes applied to it, which can be converted to two chords. Regarding the tempo, which shall later on be explored, it was one of the final decisions we made while developing uh, our system. Starting off with the melody composition, the pitch, uh, we decided to consider, consider the angle's histogram. Um, and instead of correlating it directly with pitch, we decided to correlate it with intervals for the, the next pitch, to decide the next pitch, pitch concerning uh, one, where the pitch we are at. So from the angle histogram, we obtained a probability distribution that um, is associated to intervals. So for example, here we have a probability uh, angle histogram converted to a probability distribution, and we have our correspondences from angles to intervals. Uh, this uh, correspondence was, was tested um, and we were trying to capture the answers of the angles in intervals. We tried also a chromatic approach but it was rather not correct because uh, it's not exactly the, the range of the interval that is a direct association with the angle, at least in our uh, opinion. Of course, this is merely our choice regarding our, our static. So having the probability distribution, uh, we decided to use the zero angle predominance feature. And in the case of this feature being high, which is the maximum one, uh, means that the, the zero angle vertex, uh, vertices correspond to planar surfaces. So our attention goes towards what arises from it or its limitations. So if this feature is high, we decided to cut on the probability of the interval associated with the zero angles um, of being chosen. And we cut a maximum of 80%. In this case, we cut the maximum because it's equal to one and uh, we redistribute it among the others. So finally, we choose a certain uh, interval, uh, but we also um, thought that um, we, we we acknowledge that if a certain angle does does not occur, um, that interval will never happen, of course. And we also consider that uh, not for a certain range of angles, not only the respective interval uh, could represent it, but also the neighboring intervals. So we decided to apply after this a standard normal distribution to give the neighboring intervals a chance of being chosen. So from here, finally, we have our interval, in this case, a major third. And uh, to, to obtain the direction, we went uh, for a texture feature, the perceived brightness. And the perceived brightness is from zero to one. And this will set the probability of the direction being downwards or upwards between 20 to 80%. And finally, we have our interval. And um, one question that may arise is what about the first note? We decided to use the middle C of the piano uh, to be the first note, but since this note has no value, we discard it afterwards. Regarding the duration, uh, we decided to use the curvature mean autocorrelation, so how much uh, the, the curvature varies in a certain surface. 
and we associate it with rhythmic values. Um, so if we have a low mean autocorrelation, means that it's, the surface varies a lot, the curvature. So we associate it with uh, shorter rhythmic values and higher mean autocorrelation to longer rhythmic values. But still, we wanted there to be some variety and not only one rhythmic value. So we defined this to be the most probable one. And once again, we apply the standard normal distribution to give the neighboring uh, in, uh, rhythmic values a chance of being chosen. So to sum up the melody, um, we obtain from for each segment the angle histogram and the mean autocorrelation. And from there, we obtain the probability distributions that uh, will be the base for the melody creation. And we obtain our motif for each segment. Uh, regarding the size of each motif, um, uh, it, uh, the size of each, each motif is relative to the size of the segment to the whole sculpture. So a longer, uh, uh, um, a bigger segment will have a longer motif. Moving to the harmony, uh, we took the hue saturation value color model, um, and we consider that the value uh, component describes how bright or how dark a certain uh, color is. And we saw there a simple association with the modes from the major scale that can also be described from darker to brighter. Still, we consider that not all modes should be associated to all hues, since some hues are in hand, are brighter than others. Um, so we decided we took from each segment the two mo most common colors, and we divided the hue wheel into three groups. Each group uh, uh, will be associated to a range of modes. So the group one is the brightest, group three is the, the darkest. And um, in all groups, if the value is below 20%, we consider it to be black and we immediately associate it with the darkest mode, a low cream. The opposite occurs when the value is above 20% and the saturation below 10%, we consider it to be white and associate it with the brightest mode, lydian. Finally, from the melody, we extract the tone and using the mode, we obtain the chords for the motif. Regarding the order of the motifs, uh, having the separate motifs, we, we um, use the, the whole sculpture's angle histogram to obtain a probability distribution, and we simply verified which order better respects this probability distribution. And regarding the tempo, this was one of the final decisions, and we decided to use the color variation, um, which is a ratio um, of the number of unique colors um, to the number of total colors. And this will vary the tempo between 80 to 180 BPM. Finally, we have our primal composition, which is simply the motifs ordered. And we also obtained the tonified composition uh, where we apply a function we call tonify, which simply takes the off-scale notes and, um, and changes to the closest uh, in-scale note, on-scale note. Still, we decided to use a generic algorithm to obtain more interesting results. Um, and uh, for the generic algorithm, uh, we generate 100 motifs for each segment and we order them randomly. So we obtain 100 individuals. It's our initial population. And uh, we decided to use three uh, fitness measures, order fitness concerning the order of the motif, uh, the, of the order of the motifs. Uh, mode definition fitness, which is how well a certain mode is represented in a motif, and range fitness, which is simply to uh, avoid um, having a too wide range in a, in a certain motif. We have 10 percent elitism. We take 10 percent, uh, the 10 percent fittest individuals, uh, right on to the next generation. The selection process is based on the fitness of each individual, so higher the fitness. More, more, um, the higher the probability of being selected, have 80% probability of crossover. We have two types of crossover, note crossover and motif crossover. Note where uh, we change the notes of one segment's motif, and uh, we change, we maintain the, the rhythmic rhythm and we change the pitch and motif, we change half of the motifs from one individual to the other. We have four types of mutation, ordered mutation, tonified mutation, inversion mutation, and retrograde mutation. Um, and this is how we get onto the next generation. Uh, we do this until we get uh, 100 individuals once again. 
that the our termination criteria is once you get 300 generation and for the output results we decided to join the fittest from each 100 generation because we became interested with the with the concept of evolutionary process as artwork so as we listen to the composition we'll also listen to the song being evolved to evaluate we use a data set composed of two uh, sculptures we obtained online and four we captured and processed and um, we performed surveys uh, we had two surveys uh, each with three sculpture compositions and we made uh, three uh, possible interpretations using virtual instruments the the software music card the open software music card uh, one closest to jazz one rock and one to the lack of a better term electronic space rock and um, we wanted to evaluate the music and the sculpture music association both for the preferred and the least preferred interpretation we had 61 participants in the first 36 in the second regarding uh, the music musical quality was the participants if they considered to be music the what they listened to and 96.26 percent considered it to be music and regarding the quality of the music uh, for the preferred interpretation in the question how you do rate your music from one to five we obtained the median of four and three for the least preferred regarding the sculpture music association uh, we asked the participants uh, to check which descriptors uh, better describe the sculpture and the music in separate, of course. And only after they acknowledged that one came from the other, uh, we asked them if they thought they, were, they are related. So we took here some, for examples, the, our first two uh, were not so good. Uh, the first one, uh, we, we, from the beginning, we thought the results wouldn't be good because the sculpture is an altar painted red, which has a lot of, uh, cultural meaning to us and this our system will not be able to capture that and we can verify that by the descriptors they were very different and we obtained a Batashari coefficient of both the the, um, the histograms of 0 0.5 and regarding the question do you think they are related we obtained a median of two for both the interpretations so the results were bad as we expected in this case, we were not expecting, but what we what we verified is that uh, the participants had a, a very uh, the, their uh, description for the sculpture varies dra very drastically. So some described it as happy, some as sad, uh, exciting, and boring. So there is uh, there is not a, a descriptor that better matches. So although we obtained a Batashari coefficient of zero point nine. In the do you think they are related question, uh, we obtained a median of three for the preferred interpretation and two for the least preferred. Better results. Um, in this sculpture, we obtained um, uh, similar descriptors, obtaining a, a Batashari coefficient of 0 0.89. And in the do you think they are related question, we obtained a median of four for the preferred interpretation and three for the least preferred. And this one, my personal favorite, um, we can see that the sculpture uh, and the music uh, descriptors are very similar also and we obtained a Petashari coefficient of 0 0.85 and in the do you think they are related question we obtained a median of five for the preferred interpretation three for the least preferred so uh, uh, this was, ah, regarding conclusions uh, <laughs> we compose music inspired by sculpture and we assess the musical quality and association in the evaluation we consider it to be verified and for future work human interpretation instead of virtual uh, instruments would be a big improvement um, and other approaches regarding the mapping the musical elements considered and even the approach towards the genetic algorithm i will just show here one my favorite uh, output played with uh, using virtual instruments
So thank you very much. I'm open to questions. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Francisco. Okay, uh, I think we have a question in the chat. I can read or you can, I can read, read it. I can read. Okay. Uh, did you consider making the process reversible so that you could convert from a sculpture uh, to a composition, from a composition to a sculpture? Okay, this is actually very interesting. Um, the thing, uh, I think it would, it would, I did not consider it, although we consider trying to make an inspirational model broader, not only from sculpture to music, but rather different uh, domains uh, to other different domains, having the same aesthetic measures in the middle but i think the most difficult part in that case would be that we have had to consider compositions composed in the similar style as we did here so it would have to be probably um, a model uh, composition and it will have to use motifs or at least we, we would have to extract motifs from it but it's uh, it would be very interesting yeah. thank you i don't know if i answered or if you have further questions Okay, thank you. And this was from E.D. Easton. I have a, a question too. Oh, okay. Go ahead, thank you. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, thank you. So, uh, first of all, let me say I uh, just would like to say that uh, I appreciated how thoroughly you covered so many attributes of the uh, sculptures and represented them. I, I feel like that you uh, covered a lot more attributes than than typically see when people are doing this sort of generative work, uh, you know, converting one one form to another. So uh, bravo there. Um, one uh, question that I had was the genetic algorithm component mm -hmm. seemed, if I understood correctly, is working, it's taking some of your generated pieces and then evolving them towards uh, a highly fit output piece. What I'm not clear on is what, uh, it, it seems like the pieces are already quite well defined and, and are strong representations of the attributes of the sculpture to begin with. So what, did, did you notice any, um, I mean, what if you just take the genetic element out uh, the, the pieces that are generated directly from, I mean, are, are they substantially worse? Um, so thank you for your question, first of all. And regarding, um, so what we considered was, uh, I also study, studied music and to me an important aspect of, of um, modal compositions is how well the mode is defined uh, in the music that is uh, there are certain notes in a mode that better define that mode, and I wanted to uh, to I wanted that for for this system. So I wanted to improve on the compositional aspect while maintaining uh, the uh, what we obtain from the sculpture. And we will. I also wanted to try to do this without being too brute force. So the genetic algorithm it's kind of a natural way of doing this. We have uh, several different compositions made for the sculpture and we can improve on the final piece. We can say that uh, by, by altering little things and combining them differently. And also uh, we could assess the order. So if there are certain motives to that together, the order will be better, uh, will respect more the descriptors. So yeah, and we, but also the range, which is also nice because Sometimes they would be like, especially for for more uh, more you can say like squared sculptures where the main intervals were the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth. Then it would be like climbing and climbing or going down, and then we had the melody that was already in the bass register. So uh, so also that that all of that kind of influences influences us to go towards the genetic approach. And another, yeah. Uh, so basically, the, if I understand, then you're saying that the genetic algorithm aspect basically it, it kind of removes the outliers, removes the sort of extreme yeah. uh, results kind of, that, yeah. that don't and, have the right musicality. Yeah. Nice. Exactly. nice. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And also another thing that is really important because when I when we started this, uh, I wanted to try to experiment with genetic algorithms. 
So it was something I wanted to use. And one thing I was confronted when I had the primal composition, uh, which is just the ordered motifs, it's like, these are motifs. If they don't repeat, they are not motifs. I have right. to get some way to repeat them. So we tried on the generic algorithm and we considered to uh, increase the size of the composition to have the motives repeat. And then it was when we considered that it will be it would be very interesting to listen to the music evolve. So then we joined the fittest and we have uh, the repair, uh, some motives repeat, others don't. But it's interesting because the ones that repeat are the strongest. So, yeah. Great. Well, fantastic work. Thank you.